So version 118 of the Z1 Analyzer brings a whole bunch of improvements to the software, and we want to talk about all of those in this video. These include things like being able to move the lap beacon forward or backwards, um, stepping through the data again forward and backwards, displaying corner overlays, uh, more data channels, uh, so I think there's yaw, roll, and pitch, and um, the acceleration of all of those as well. Uh, and information about what's going on uh, at the cursor in the status bar. So we're going to talk about those right now. OK, so first up, we are going to talk about moving the lap beacon around. This would be useful if you uh, are importing a external data lab um, from a real life uh, track, and you want to compare it to a track in the sim. Uh, when you're comparing two laps uh, from a sim, that start beacon is always gonna, going to line up. The sim will always have it in exactly the same place. But when you are importing laps from an external source and comparing them either against another external lap or against the sim lap, sometimes the start beacon can be off. And this obviously is a problem because you don't want to be um, trying to analyze data when one start beacon is 100 feet or whatever it is different from another. So the Z1 analyzer lets you move the start beacon of the base lap uh, around to line up the laps. There are many ways to do this. Uh, one of them is if you go to the laps uh, menu and choose shift lap. This uh, tells you what you can do to move them around and allows you to enter an exact uh, distance amount either by feet, meters, or centimeters to move your lap forward or backwards. So say you know that it was off by 50 feet, you can type in 50, make sure it's feet, I hit OK. And then the lap gets shifted over 50 feet. Um, another way to do it is if you hold the shift key down and then move the left uh, mouse key, you can drag the whole thing. You can see here the base lap is actually moving back and forth compared to the main lap. And uh, then when you have where you want it, just let it go, and then you're all set. Another way to do it is you can use the shift forward or backwards um, options here, or the shift and right and shift and left arrow options. So if you do shift and the right or left arrow, this just moves it one data point forward or back. So this is a very fine uh, way of moving your lap forwards and backwards. So that's all there is to it. Once you have your lap where you want it, you can then analyze as you normally would. Uh, one thing to say about this is that this is not a permanent change to your lap data. This only affects the lap once it's loaded into the analyzer. It does not affect your saved data for this lap. Uh, so that way, if you want to use it in some other scenario, that original data has not been changed. stepping forward and backwards through your data. So when you're in the analyzer, you can click anywhere on a trace and get the information about uh, the data at that particular point. You can also uh, play the data forwards to watch it actually in real time. But if you want to move the data forward one pixel at a time, or, or one data point at a time, you can do that using the right and left arrow keys. So every time you click, on the uh, right or left arrow key, it moves one data point forwards or backwards. Uh, now, as you zoom in, it's easier to see this. So you can see every time I click, I move forward one data point, and if I click left, it moves backwards one data point. So this is just a way to give you really fine control over where you are in your lap. And it's also available up here under the lap menu under step forward or step backwards. All right, next up is corner overlays. So right now, we are looking at a standard display on the analyzer with our uh, traces and our track map. Now, if you want to see where the corners are in the traces, you can do that by uh, going to the display menu and choosing show corner overlays right here. So what this does is it highlights where the corners are on the track so you can see what you're doing in those corners very easily. Uh, the corner data is determined by the analyzer uh, when it reads in the lap based on what your steering is doing and what g-forces are doing. And you can customize uh, how this display looks. 
you can choose uh, this option right here where it shows you the corner and highlights the entire thing. Uh, or you can choose just to show the corner number and the extents the left and the right end of the corner. So this is done under the settings dialog. Uh, you come here to fill corner overlay. If I uncheck this, then when I come back here, the corners are not uh, completely full. You just get an outline of where they are. Uh, in addition, the colors used to um, mark a left or a right turn can also be customized. So uh, right now you have uh, red as a right turn and blue as a left turn. If you want to change that to something else, you can do so in the settings dialog under the screen colors. And uh, you scroll down here to the bottom under track map. We have left turns and we have right turns. So if you wanted a different color for one of these, just click on the color you want to change. And let's say you wanted green as uh, the right turn color. Choose green, click OK and OK. And then when you come back here, now you have green to show your right hand color. So you can customize this uh, to your liking so that it works what's best for you. OK, next one, I had to move myself up the screen a bit because what we're going to talk about is down here in the status bar. Uh, this is a small addition, but an important one. Uh, so right here, uh, you see it says cursor, and it has uh, right now just a 0 and 1.5 feet. So if I click somewhere on a trace, uh, that's the cursor mark. And down here in the status bar, it tells you the time at that point on the track and the distance at that point on the track. So you can see that I clicked at uh, 8.95 seconds into my lap and at 1,332.9 feet. And this is always based on the main lap. So if you have two laps loaded and one of them uh, and the base lap is farther ahead or behind, you're still getting the main lap's uh, information down here under the cursor section. And uh, the distance is in feet, but if you have your distance set to metric, you'll see it in meters instead of in feet. So again, a small one, but sometimes the small additions are really useful. New data channels. We have six new data channels in version 118. And these are your uh, chassis uh, data channels for yaw, roll, pitch, uh, the yaw rate, the roll rate, and the pitch rate. So as you can see here, you can show these uh, in a trace. To get them, you just right click and they're all here under the new chassis submenu. Uh, and these again are available uh, for import with external data. Um, you can also use them in your custom traces. So if I choose a custom trace, um, I have them available here to uh, use as um, parameters within my custom trace. Uh, and one thing to note about these is they, for the simulators, they are sim dependent. So if the sim does not support it, uh, you're not going to see it. Uh, right now, iRacing is the only one that outputs this data. Uh, we hope to add more in the future, but we'll see based on the data available in those other sims. But for now, uh, you can use these in uh, iRacing and in uh, real world data and in your uh, custom channels. And finally, we wanted to talk about the new license levels that are available as of 118. So we've added an educational license level. Uh, this is for obviously anyone who's a university or um, a college and wants to use the software in that sort of setting. Um, so now we have uh, four license levels. There's the standard one for use, uh, private use at home. Uh, there's the track license, which adds in uh, things that allow you to import data uh, from external sources. There's the educational license and the commercial license, which gives you full access to all um, the options that the software has, uh, live telemetry versus recorded labs, printing, things like that. Uh, now, when you run the software, um, we've added the option here on the bottom, run as demo. You can choose what license level you want to run the demo as. So if you're interested in trying out the track license, you can choose the track option here. If you want to use an educational or a commercial license and try that out, you can do that too. Uh, and just like the demo has always been, it gives you uh, 15 minutes of time uh, to try the demo. At that point, you have to restart the application uh, and you get another 15 minutes. Uh, for as much time as you need, uh, as many times as you need, 
um, to try out the software and uh, make sure it does what you want it to do. So that was an overview of many of the new features in version 118. Uh, the software is always evolving, and we hope that these features and many others in the software help it be more useful and uh, more intuitive when you're analyzing your data and learning how you can drive those laps a little bit faster. Uh, the next version we have coming along in March is version 119, and it's going to pave the way to allow us to introduce a lot of new features moving forward. So we are looking forward to that, uh, and I'm sure you are looking forward to that. In the meantime, we will have more videos about the analyzer, about the dashboard software, and the server software. So please subscribe to the channel and like this video, and we'll have more content soon.